Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. Today we are going to be starting day one of our sketchbook series where I'm going to be doing short 10 to 15 minute um, sessions where I paint every day and I do it in my sketchbook and I try not to put a lot of pressure on myself. Um, I just get in there. Sometimes I'm super inspired and have a really a uh, great idea that I want to get out and other times I open the sketchbook looking for inspiration. So we are going to be doing watercolor painting in our books. Um, again, short lessons. Let's get started and I can't wait to go on this journey with you in 2024. I have a sketchbook here that I started in 2022 that I never finished and I am going to work to finish it quickly um, this year by just getting into it every day and then I'll start a new one. Um, so for 2024, instead of setting really big lofty goals and resolutions, there's a lot of talk about getting, you know, starting the year strong and setting these big um, goals and resolutions that you're going to stick to, whether it's health and wellness and fitness and diet or um, your creative journey and I'm going to paint a masterpiece every day. Um, that's just, we're going to start slow. We're just going to paint for 15 minutes every day in our sketchbook. And of course, I'll be working on other things um, throughout the rest of my day, but this is how I like to start my day. So before anyone gets up in my house, I'm going to make sure to get in here and I'll just show you what's in this book already. I started it while I was in London and uh, so you can see a little Big Ben painting there um, and lots of different architecture, um, bridges and domes and cathedrals and archways and statues, all kinds of stuff in here. Um, lots of clock towers in London, lots of them. This was across from my hotel um, and landscapes. And then I started putting a few other random things in here that I had I don't even know why or when uh, but we are gonna start by just filling up more pages I hope to use front and back of all of these as well so maybe I'll start over here today Thank you. all right so we're gonna start here on this page and fill this one up I'm just gonna take I have another extra piece of paper, blank paper I'm just gonna put this over here to protect what's going on over here and again you don't have to paint something super complicated or um, a finished piece every time. Sometimes you can just paint swatches and maybe we'll do that sometimes. So today I am going to, um, I think I'm going to start with just a nice sunrise. So I just have my pencil here. My, my supplies pretty much every day are going to be this sketchbook, my core paints, which I'm going to use whatever I feel like at the time and one or two brushes. So nothing super complicated, not bringing in any other fancy ones. Oh my gosh, my palette is like stuck shut. It shows you how much I've been painting recently. It's been a crazy beginning of the year and I am now ready to ease into it. Okay, so this morning when I got up, before I started to paint, I took the dog out and uh, we went into the backyard and saw a beautiful sunrise. So we're gonna paint a sunrise today, or I am, and I'm just going to use some really soft colors. So some really, really muted, or not muted, but um, diluted soft colors. So let me get my palette, let me get better set up here and then we'll get started. All right, I think that's a better setup. So you can see everything. You can see I have my morning coffee over here. The goal is to try not to drink the paint water and not to dip the watercolor brush in the coffee. So I've put them on opposite sides. Now what I usually do, I usually don't have an open cup of coffee um, by my paint setup. I use, if I'm drinking coffee or anything else, I put it in a travel mug. That's my trick after one too many times of dipping my brush in a perfectly good cup of coffee and ruining it. Um, how many of you have all, how many of you all have done that before? I'm sure many of you. I have only drank, I'm pretty sure, only 
actually sipped my paint water once and it wasn't even like a full sip. It was like to the lips. And then, uh, I realized I was like, Oh my gosh. And it was because it was in a plastic cup and it was like almost like a cocktail cup that we were using for water cups at an event. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was a beautiful green cocktail. Um, it was just green paint water. All right. So I have, I'm going to paint this sunrise. Um, and I'm going to do a gradual, and I think I'm actually going to use some of this brighter yellow. This is cadmium yellow. So I use core paints. I'm a core girl. And I'm just going to start at the bottom and work my way up from light, bright yellows. I love painting skies, especially dramatic skies. Sunrises and sunsets are like my favorite things in the world to paint. I could probably fill up just this whole sketchbook painting, literally the same painting, but just messing around with the colors in the sky. And there's like some little red funkiness going on in here. I don't know what it came from. So I started with my cadmium yellow. I'm adding in some diorolide yellow, which is a warmer yellow. I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. And this book, I honestly, I don't know the brand of this book. I think I got it in London while I was there. Um, it's, it's equivalent. The paper would not be, it's not my favorite. So Bohong, which is really hard to get right now in the cold press is my favorite sketchbook. I really like Etcher um, sketchbooks. But um, this one would be equivalent to like a Strath, a good Strathmore one, the paper. So not my favorite, but not awful. So nice and yellow. And then we're going to add some pink. Now I have a little opera pink in here. It's not normally in my palette. So it's like a little bit on the side. Opera pink is super bright. But if you really dilute it, and it makes a beautiful orange when you mix with yellow. But I'm just going to... Put it towards the top here. And I think I'm going to introduce some more of it. Let me get a great handy tool in your sketchbook. If you don't want to tape anything down, are these little binder clips here to hold things down while you paint. And you can move them around. I'm not going to go all the way to the edges. We'll just stop right there. And now while things are still wet, I think I'm going to add a little bit of this down in here and look at this beautiful kind of orange this makes. I love opera. I feel like the opera pink really um, preserves the brightness of an orange for a sky when you mix it with your yellows rather than getting too muddy. If you mix like a Quinn, I, it's not that I don't use those in skies. I definitely do. Um, but I feel like it's easier to get muddier with Quinn or Rose than Opera Pink in a sky when you're trying to get oranges. So I'm just kind of messing around with this, waiting till the moment where it's too dry for me to mess with anymore before it gets weird. Beautiful. So I'm going to let that dry and kind of work on the ground line here. I'm just going to do a simple green and I'm going to put a tree line in. It's always satisfying to do a silhouette in front of a sky. Let's, um, here, I'm going to take some, what is this? This is raw sienna and I'm just going to take this raw sienna. I'm going to kind of give myself a bit of a winding path it's a little more than a winding path from the back to the front and you can see I didn't draw anything out I'm just keeping it loose and I know like as whatever path 
like got closer to me. And this is, almost looks more like a a bank, like a, a little creek or a stream than a path because I made the edges really jagged instead of kind of smooth. But it gets really wide the closer it gets to the viewer. Ooh, I just put in a really dark version of that, but that's okay. Let's just blend it out. Blend, 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 all the way to the back. And then I'm just gonna add green around it. I'm gonna let this side be kind of rough. Yeah, that looks good. And for you, if you are, if you do want to kind of paint every day and set an intention to do that, it might not be in the morning for you. Um, everybody has different schedules. I know some people aren't morning people. Some people have different kinds of jobs that um, maybe evening or middle of the afternoon at lunchtime would feel or fit better into your life. And that's totally okay. Morning just works for me. It helps me uh, get some of my creative juices flowing. And again, I try to do it before the family is up. <clears throat> but that doesn't always work out and then I have to wait for them to leave. <laughs> And just enjoy my time with them in the morning as they kind of get ready for their day and get out the door to school and jobs. Very nice. I'm going to leave lots of white space in this, I think. Yeah. I could always go back and add more details. I'm going to make... Mm, Pick up some more green and some more black, and I'm just going to make a few darker areas. And then, what else am I going to do? Hmm. I'm going to just put in some vertical greenery. Well, this is still far too wet down here. But I think I'm going to change brushes. I'm going to change to a smaller, what do I got here, a three? And I do, I'm trying to go slower. I know that might not be, you know, as exciting for the video, but just to show you that you don't have to paint fast. You can kind of think about things before you do them. Some of the vertical. Put on some music. Oh, I love painting with music on. In my headphones is best, actually, when I paint. I love it. It cancels everything else out, and you kind of just get in your own world. Podcast and books sometimes, but... When I'm really feeling creative, I love music. What about y'all? Do you listen to something? Do you watch TV? Do you listen to music? Podcasts? I would love to know what other people kind of do. Do you need silence? <laughs> do you just, do you have a baby monitor on and you're just hoping the little one doesn't wake up? Do you have a pet companion with you? Tell me in the comments. What's your best kind of favorite painting setup? And what are your companions with you while you paint? All right, I'm going to leave that. And now we're going to work on, or I'm going to work on, some silhouettes along the sky. Now the way I painted this, this um, horizon line is really far back, so my trees aren't gonna be that tall, but I could always paint something. This is where you can play. 
I pick up some Payne's Gray and throw it in this green and just make it mostly Payne's Gray. But you could play. So I'm going to put some, this is wet, so I'm going to try not to get my hand in it. I'm going to put some in the background. And this is where, actually, I'm going to pick up, da -da -da. I said I was going to keep it simple with the brushes, but, and I am, I'm just going to pick up my smallest brush if I can find it in here. I have a rigger. I was going to use my size one liner. I've really come to enjoy this brush. This is my size two. All right, so we'll just use, so you can see I have two. I have a liner and then a script liner, and they're slightly different. This one is slightly longer than this one. I like the liners from Princeton. They seem, they just have a little bit more control. They're still very thin and you can get very thin lines, but when you want to have a little bit more stability or control while you're painting something tiny. I really like these. So I'm just putting some bare trees in the background. And actually, you know what, let's do, hmm, I'm going to bring back my other brush. You all bored yet? Well, I'm enjoying it. And the worst case is that I'm just here by myself. And if not, then thank you for joining me. I'm just going to add in like a mountain range kind of in the background. Silhouette. And this could actually be mountains or it could be a tree line. Actually, it looks more like a tree line. Let's call it a tree line. Round it out a little bit, some of the areas. There we go. And then I'm going to put, all right, so now I'm going to put something in the foreground that's going to, and this is where we're going to experiment. And maybe we'll love it and maybe we'll hate it. But, and if it was this far in the foreground, actually, we'd see some color. It wouldn't be so silhouetted. So let's get in some dark brown in here. But it's in our sketchbook. So we're going to learn something about whether it works or whether it doesn't. Trees can be so fascinating and fun to paint. Very meditative. Just remember, everything starts thicker and gets thinner as it goes towards the top. And build branches off your branches, off your branches. And I should probably change my brush again. I get some really thin additions. Yeah, I think this was a good addition to this. And you can make them as full as you want or as bare. All right, and you could add, you know, let's add another one and then we'll be done. And then I'll feel like very satisfied with this soft 
uh, sunrise painting, bringing us into the new year. I'm going to put one like right up here towards the front. And I'm so excited to continue to fill these pages with you all and hopefully inspire you to paint a little bit every day and not put so much pressure on yourself. Let's have a smooth and soft takeoff this year. No need Sorry, I got in my own head there. No need to um no need to go so strong and hard from the get-go. Warm up to your creative journey. Or take a break from going like so hardcore for so long if you've been painting a lot and you just want to slow down a little bit or have some time where there isn't so much pressure on the final piece. That's what sketchbooks are great for, taking out the pressure. You don't need to be pressured or stressing about everything you paint. It should be enjoyable and fueling your creative self and your creative soul. Still big water droplet there. That's all right. All right, let's see what we got. Beautiful, and that only took us like 15 minutes. And it was very satisfying. I love it. Well, thank you so much for painting with me today. Hopefully, I will see you again tomorrow um, for another kind of 15-minute morning sketchbook refresh. I haven't thought of a name for it all yet, but that's what we're going to do. And thank you for painting with me. Don't forget to check out the description for more information um, about uh, my supplies and materials. And happy painting, y'all. Bye.